be allowed. So, excluding that one thing, why can't we annex them in the other four things, embrace them back, and to create a potential qualitative and quantitative society which would strengthen the Vaishnavism more? And in Varavara Munindra, also in Deshikendra Siddhantas, lot of concepts are there, but they are not concerned with the basic tenets. Whether the goddess Lakshmi has the authority of mediation or emancipation, if it is dependent or independent, joint venture or independent venture, Kaivalya, absolute solitude, whether it is emancipation or an intra-cosmic opulential status. Who is going to practice Kaivalyam and who is going to bother about these intrinsic efforts and features? Take the basic thing, supremacy of Vishnu, serving him and his devotees, contributing some to the world. Something to the world will be suggested. Thousands of reasons are there to unite. And whenever there is an initiative from the other side, certainly we have to answer for establishing and clarifying our thought. So, unwarranted and demanded, it is better to observe silence in contradictory and controversial figures and unanimously declare something for strengthening, fortifying, consolidating the solidation of our ancestral values and privilege. That is our duty. There is intra-conflict resolution. Intra-conflict resolution it does not exist now much. Before Ramanuja Acharya's period, they have to contradict with the three major forces. Nastikas were very little in number. They contradicted and there was debate between Buddhists and Jains. He done with his erudition and radiation. We are learning also from the Tandanur incident. Mm. How he controlled thousands of people and answered unanimously. Simultaneously. Then uh, the second thing is Shaiva and Vaishnava about the supremacy factor. Third is Advaita and Vishishta Advaita. Lot of things are happening but they don't affect the society. What is the impact on society with the Sata Dushani and Bhushani? What is the impact of the society with uh, Shiva Tattva Viveka and Vedanta Kaustubha? What is there with the Sri Tattva Vichara and Sri Tattva Nirdharana? Except with the elite society, it does not deal with uh, the common society at all. Just like a crusades, there were bloodshed battles. These things are already told, bookshed battles. <laughs> Then there are a lot of other contributions which most of the people they may not be knowing. Dravida, Shirob, Shankara Shirobhusha and Dravida Traya Darshana. Dravida Traya Darshana is written by Pogam Ram Shastri. Dramida Acharya, he told that they belong to the Advaita lineage. Dravida Traya Darshana, for which Anangra Acharya, he wrote his Shankara Shirobhusha. Shankara Shirobhusha. Then Shitajit Acharya Brahma Siddhi. And Saptavidhan Bhukati Pariksha by Injikolai Shastri, which was answered by Kovi Aram Swami. So these things are their book debates. These are all mind-boggling, soul-stirring, awe-inspiring, and it is a process of intellectual exercise. It is a process of intellectual exercise which nourishes you. It is a process of nourishment, not perishing your intellect and making you a brutal element of fight with all people. So these things are inter-conflict. And the third main thing is integral Vaishnavism. Mat Sanni Krishna Matamashe Dham. So there are a lot of Sanni Krishna Matas. Even there were debates between Madhva and Ramana Sampradaya to Chandrika regarding the concept of Ananda and Taratamya. The difference in the eudaimonic bliss enjoyed by the emancipated souls. So this is the status that existed, but they totally neglected all of these things and come for a resolution. And fourth thing, taking Ramanuja Sampradaya as a tool for social upliftment and eradication of social evils. Fifth, taking Ramanuja Sampradaya as a tool for global fraternity and prosperity. So, revival of Vaishnavism, intra and inter-conflict resolution, integral Vaishnavism with Vallabha, Nimbarda, Swaminarayana, Shankara Deva and also, also Shankara philosophy. Shankara is also a Vaishnava. We are seeing the commentary of Nirastha Bhutim in Anubhashya Gambiriya of Srivasana Ramadubhadhatri, wherein by the greatness of Shankaracharya with Vaishnava practices has been indubitably installed. Vajralaya Pahita. So Shankara, Allabha, Nimbarga, Madhvacharya, Ramanuja, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, all of these, like Swami Narayan, all of these Sampradayas, Sapta Sampradayas, brother associations, for getting the integral strength of Vaishnavism for social security, support and development. And fourth is Ramanuja Sampradaya 
as a tool for social upliftment and eradication of social evils. Fifth is for global fraternity and prosperity. These five methods we have to discuss. Lot of people are available here. You can write your articles, contribute your articles in a very elucidated, descriptive manner, which can be published as the proceedings through the Vaishnava Sri Ranganathiyar Achakam, which may be made available through net sources and public sources, so that everybody can design, derive, and direct others also in the past. So I, I should conclude this keynote address with the two just simple statements. One is Sri Manu Sri Ranga Sri Manubhadrava Manudinam Sambardhaya. That's why we want to pray. Everybody is praying the same thing in their houses, in temples. I want that to take an effective manifestation and magnification by which it should come in the form of a fructified form of truth and experience. If Sri Ranga Sri is the root, Shrine Mule Naiva Shakana Patram, if it is nourished, then the Sampradaya, what is that Sri Ranga Sri? It is the Sampradaya. It is the Bhakti. It is the Sadhanantra, Devatantra. Prayojanantara Rahita Nishkaranga Neravadika Bhakti that existed in the people of Sri Rangam that they devoted towards the Lord of Sri Rangam. That we must develop by means of our preaching methods. And second thing, Ramanujani Divyajna Vardhatam Abhivardhatam. What is Vardhatam and Abhivardhatam? Quantitative enrichment is Vardhata. Qualitative enrichment is Abhivardhatam. Ramanujani Divyajna Prativasara Mujwala Diganta Vyapini Bhuyat, not for us and for our tradition, Sahi Loka Hidaishari, for global fraternity, for global prosperity, for the upliftment of the society and humanity, let it prosper and let us be tools, let us be the receptacles. Why we are glorifying the leadership of Ramanuja? For three reasons. One, if he is glorified, according to Padanta Deva Sutra, if glorifiable people are glorified mm -hmm. and other elements are totally discarded, the society gets the emergence of glorifiable personalities. If the glorifiable people, worshipable personalities are totally forgotten and the filthy elements are enthroned, then the society loses the opportunity of emergence of such personalities. To create a lineage, the emergence of such personalities and when such personalities come, we must be a good receptor. We must be fortunate enough to see, embrace and get the associative benefit. So, to associate with Ramanuja, is to get more leadership principles within us, number one, to get more leaders in the future, number three, to be a good receptacle of the blessings of both Imbarman and Imbarmana, Shiva Narayana and Ramanuja, that let us be the effective receptacles of the grace of Ramanuja and contribute integrally for the development of Vaishnavism, which is nothing but the development of the world itself, because lack of Sattva Guna results in the emergence of Tamasa and Rajasa Gunas. Tamasa and Rajasa Gunas they are the total responsible factors for the all abnormalities and disfigurations of the society. Sattvika quality is developed only by four methods. By associative benefits, by Sangha, by thoughts, imprints, Sattvika Chinta, by food habits, Sattvika Ahara, Sattvika Devata Upasana, the fourth thing. Mahan Prabhu Vai Purushaha, Sattva Syaiha Pravartaka, so says the Shruti. So by worshipping of the Sattva Murti only, that will result in the formation of the real system of worship whereby everybody will get it, their own benefits. Due to the non-performance of such thing, we are now puppeted with three qualities. I want to say it very clearly. One is hyper-evaluation. Somebody will be having a small quality, like an yoga acharya, a small Ayurveda acharya. Then he will become a great Swami and worshipable Bihar. If he is a yoga master, he is a yoga master. If somebody stitches your cloth, as he is stitching, how he can be your surgeon? As the act of stitching is common in both the apps. So that is hyper evaluation. And second thing is adverse attraction. Somebody will be worshipping terrorists and disruptive elements as heroes. That is adverse attraction. Blind fascination. We don't know why he is worshipping. I am keeping the photo and worshipping. Who knows that? As you are responsible, we are responsible, I am responsible. As we have not done this, as you have not cleansed yourself and your house. We are getting all impurities inside. If you don't consider your house, you can see spider webs. After a few weeks, you can see scorpions. After a few weeks, you can see snakes. After a few years, you can see demons and fear shims. So total discarding one's own responsibility of its commitment towards propagation of the truthful ideals, we are the responsible factors for these three blunders of the society. Hyper-evaluation, adverse attraction and blind fascination let us contribute for the eradication of the same and the establishment of the real worshipable personality.